Okay, so in the previous video, we learned about the ideal gas law, which tells us that PV equals NRT, right? And P is pressure, V is volume, N is moles, R is the gas constant, which we said was 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Okay, and T is our temperature, right? And we talked about why units are important. Pressure must be in atmospheres, volume must be in liters, and temperatures must be in Kelvin so that the units of our gas constant work out. All right, so in this video, we're gonna see how we can take this equation, the ideal gas law, and use it to um, allow us to predict, uh, predict information about chemical reactions. So let's start off with a sample reaction that we've seen before. This would be the decomposition of ammonia. So if we have two equivalents of ammonia gas decomposing to produce a nitrogen gas and three equivalents of hydrogen gas. And we are told that ammonia is confined in a flask that's exactly 0 0.5 liters at a temperature of 200 Kelvin at a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres. Um, our goal is to take this information and figure out what pressure of nitrogen and hydrogen can be produced if ammonia decomposes with 100% yield. Okay, and in this reaction, we are told that the temperature and the volume don't change. All right, so let's think about how we can approach this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the reaction down here. Okay, so this is a stoichiometry problem. And since we only have one reactant, it's a straightforward stoichiometry problem where we don't need to worry about limiting reactants. So in this case, we are told information about the volume temperature and pressure of an ideal gas. And using this information, we are able to figure out how many moles of ammonia we have, okay? So this is gonna be our first step, to take the information we're given about ammonia and figure out how many moles of ammonia we have. And once we know that, we can use our balanced reaction to figure out how many moles of nitrogen we have or how many moles of hydrogen we have. And once we know how many moles of these two gases, we can then do one more step to convert each of these to pressure because we know the temperature and volume, so we can use the ideal gas law to calculate the pressure of nitrogen and the pressure of hydrogen, okay? So what I wanna emphasize is that this process is the same as every other stoichiometry problem we've seen. The first step is take the information we're given and convert to moles of reactants. In the second step, we use information about the balanced chemical reaction to convert to moles of a product. And then in the third step, we're gonna take the moles of the product and convert that to information about a product. In this case, we wanna know the pressure. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this off. So step number one here. We're gonna use the ideal gas law, but we're gonna rearrange it. So the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. We can rearrange this to solve for moles. So moles equal PV divided by RT. Okay, so we can figure out how many moles of ammonia we have because we know the pressure, the temperature, and the volume. And up in our problem here, right, so up here, we are told the pressure is 1.3 atmospheres. The volume is 0 0.5 liters. R is our gas constant, so that's 0 0.08206, and the unit is liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, and the temperature was 200 Kelvin. Okay, so if we kind of track our units here, we see the atmospheres cancel, liters cancel, Kelvin cancels, and our answer is gonna be in moles. So plugging this into your calculator, we see that we have 0 0.0396 moles 
of ammonia present in this reaction. Okay, so this is the solution to the first step here. This is how many moles of ammonia we have. We can now take this information and convert it to moles of nitrogen or to moles of hydrogen. Okay, so in our second step, let's do nitrogen first. We have 0 0.0396 moles of ammonia. And from our balanced reaction, let's go ahead and scroll up here. In our balanced reaction, for every two moles of ammonia, we create one mole of nitrogen. So two moles of ammonia give us one mole of nitrogen. So we can produce 0 0.0198 moles of nitrogen. Okay, And the second step for hydrogen is essentially the same. We have 0 0.0396 moles of ammonia. But this time, for every two moles of ammonia, we can produce three moles of hydrogen, right? Again, this is from our balanced reaction. Two moles of ammonia give us three moles of hydrogen. So in this case, we can make 0 0.0594 moles of hydrogen, okay? So that's our second conversion step here. We have now figured out how many moles of nitrogen we can make and how many moles of hydrogen we can make. The last step is to convert moles of nitrogen to the pressure, noting that the temperature and the volume do not change in this reaction. So the volume is still 0.5 liters and the temperature is still 200 Kelvin. So we can, again, rearrange the ideal gas law. So we have PV equals NRT. We want to solve for pressure. So P equals NRT divided by V, okay? And for nitrogen, right, so for nitrogen here, we have 0 0.0198 moles times our gas constant of 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin times our temperature, which was 200 Kelvin, divided by the volume, which was 0 0.5 liters. Making sure our units work out, moles cancel, Kelvin cancels, and liters cancel, so we left with atmospheres. And plugging this into your calculator, we see that we produce 0 0.65 atmospheres of nitrogen. Okay, so that's the pressure of nitrogen that we would make when this ammonia decomposes. Let's do the same thing for hydrogen. For hydrogen, we had 0 0.0594 moles, right, that's what we figured out in step two here, times our gas constant, times our temperature, divided by our volume. And when we plug this into the calculator, we're going to see that we can produce 1.95 atmospheres of hydrogen gas. Okay, so the steps in this process are the same as you've seen before. The only difference is what you do with the information you're given. In this case, you are told the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of a gas. So you can use the ideal gas law to calculate how many moles you have. You then use the balanced reaction to convert between moles of a reactant and moles of a product. And then once again, you use the ideal gas law to figure out the pressure of the gases that we've produced.